for my little brother's birthday, his uh, his girlfriend contacted me and asked if I could make this custom uh, patch for him. And this is some kind of inside joke between them. I don't really know what it is, and it doesn't really matter. I thought it was cute, and I said, heck yeah. Uh, so I brought in this little character into Photoshop, and I completely redrew it so that the colors would be more flat. Um, it would save me some time and effort whenever I went to convert it to a patch. I was kind of simplifying everything, getting rid of those fine, fine black outlines and stuff like that. And you can see me just going layer by layer and kind of redrawing it. I don't know what star status is about, but that's fine. None of my business. And here I am digitizing it. And the first run, uh, before you digitize it, I, I realized I had not indexed my colors very well. And so I ran it through the wizard, which uh, reduces the amount of colors and, and stuff, supposedly. You can see it doing its thing here. Each step is reducing the colors. And I get the final result and I had it auto stitch it and I ended up with some peculiar results where um, it was stitching over the same thing with multiple different colors. I guess I didn't index it quite well enough or something. And it, I started deleting superfluous stuff where it'd be like one stitch of one color. Um, or where it was duplicating until I got down to this point here in a moment. So so I'm thinking I could just like optimize this and use it. But then I'm starting to look around and I'm thinking, okay, something's not quite right here. And here in a moment you'll see what I mean about duplicating. You can see I'm going through each letter here and they're showing up. They're kind of hard to see, but they're showing up in white. And then I get to this tan and it's got the letters again, but also his hair. And at that point, I'm just like, you know what, forget it. I'll go back and I'll do it manually because there's only like five colors, five or six colors here. So I delete the auto stitch and I come back manually and I start going through and telling it, okay, stitch this block, this color, this block, this color. And that allows me more control and more freedom. Uh, for example, on his hair, you'll see in a moment here. I was able to switch the type of stitch. Right now I'm just kind of double checking and making sure everything's working right and then going through each color. And then uh, here in a moment we get to the hair. You see I click on, I'm, I'm gonna click on the hair to stitch it, but I wanna make it a different pattern instead of the, re the regular pattern as everything else, because there's kind of a neat kind of hair pattern in here, so I can select that. Then everything else is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Now you can see here on the right hand column that there are much fewer steps than there were with the auto stitching. Um, and that's the reason I did it manually is you can get many fewer steps in much better control. So I'm going through here and I'm adding the letters individually. And then I zoom in so I can get the eyes because they were so tiny it was very hard to see them. And I kind of suspected the little pupils in the mouth would give me a problem, but they worked out all right. They didn't really give me any trouble. I just kind of double check everything and then move on from there for uh, actual printing or actual uh, sewing.
time for a quick post-mortem. Uh, the design worked okay. Details in the eyes were not great. Um, I should have adjusted my pull better. Uh, it, it pulled in a lot and there's gaps around the letters that you can probably see if I get real close. Um, and I used a denim needle for the entire thing. I wasn't paying attention. And a denim needle is not a great thing because it's super fat and, and stiff. And a thinner needle would have given better results. But overall, I think it turned out alright and I think he'll like it. See you next time.